always good. Amen. But I tell you, some days it's a little bit extra special. If you have your Bibles, let's all stand in the reading of the Word of God. And we'll start in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 19. And we'll just start with the one verse, Genesis chapter 19, and we'll start with verse 17. Say amen when you found it. Amen. Genesis 19, verse 17. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life, look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plains, escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Let's pray. Our precious Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord. Anoint me to bring forth thy word and rightly divide the word of truth. We thank you, Lord, for the music and the songs 
And Lord, thy presence, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray those that cannot keep focus, I pray that the Holy Ghost help them keep focus today upon from the beginning to the end. Help us, Lord Jesus, to retain it in our knowledge. And glory to God, to keep on keeping on for Jesus. Lord, move upon this service. Move in a great and a mighty way. We bind every demon, every devil in hell that will try to hinder this service. And we ask it all in Jesus' name and the church says, Amen. Amen. You may be seated if you can. Verse 17, one more time. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plains. Escape to the mountains, lest thou be consumed. Now, if we read the Bible, we understand that the angels have come down. Abraham prayed for his nephew Lot to get him out of the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And amen, glory to God, here's the angels come down and said, Escape to the mountains and hear Lot. If you keep reading on, Lot said, oh, something to get us and consume us. Let us go one nearby, one of the nearby cities. And the angel says, we can't do nothing until we get you out of here. So let's get you, amen, go by a near town, nearby town. Go, you and your family. But he says, do not look back. And if I put a title of the message this morning to all of us, quit looking back. Bygones have been bygones, whatever it may be. Amen, go to God. Amen. We need to look unto the future, not look in the past. Did you hear me? Says you have a great future ahead of you, but you will not be able to fully enter into it and enjoy it if your past still holds you captive. Now you look in verse 26, but his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. If you look at some of the Bible commentaries, they get a picture of her. Of course, some erosion, some of the stuff that fell off. But she was still a pillar of salt. The past has the potential to keep you from experiencing the joy, the freedom, and blessings of the present and the future. If you let, if you let it, God wants to break free. He wants you to break free from your past and set your face toward your future with hope, courage, and expectation. And the best way I know to never give up on your future, it is to refuse to be trapped in your past. I don't care what it is, where it's been, maybe it's been a bad marriage, past, whatever it was, and amen, go to God, done did it, that's in your past. Quit allowing the enemy to bring it up and to torture your mind. Amen, go to God and say, quit looking back. You can't do nothing for the kingdom of God. How can you walk straight forward when you keep walking back, looking back? Did you hear me? The angel says, whatever you do, don't look back. But Lot's wife looked back. Even Jesus said in Luke 17 and verse 32, remember Lot's wife. That was his way of saying, stop looking back. The past is finished. Don't look behind you. Look to the future ahead. Reason the church can't go on because our families or our failures or whatever it is, amen, that we keep looking back, keeps honing us because we've allowed the enemy, amen, to bring it because he knows if you, if you stop looking in your past, amen, you have no future. 
Did you hear me? Sometimes when we focus our past, we can't even see our future. We become discouraged, hopeless, and depressed. Don't behave as if your past is more important than your future by giving it too much of your time. If you do, if you do it will keep you trapped in days gone by and still your enjoyment of the present moment and your hope for the future. When Lot's wife looked back, she lost her life, she lost her family, and she lost her future. Did you hear me? You said, Brother Pruitt, I, I forgive, but I can't forgive. Well, you can't forgive if you can't forget. You said, there ain't no way human impossible that you can do that. Hey, Amen. I'm here to tell you, if God can hang, if Jesus can hang on the cross and say, Lord, forgive them, lay not this sin to their charge, and he died for us anyway, how in the world can we not forget? We all weren't born angels as some of us think we are. Hello? We all had sin in our lives. We was born sinners until Jesus saved our souls. Amen. I want you to know you can be destroyed by keep looking back. Did you hear me? Lot's wife was. She lost her life, her family, and her future. Are you listening? God help us to keep the course. Help us, Lord, forget. Lord, don't bring up my ugly past, whatever it is. Because if he can take an inch, he will take a mile. If he can take a mile, he'll take five miles. If you'll let him. But glory to God, that's the reason. Go ahead and give the Lord a great big hand. Church, we need to move forward. Amen. Go to God. Thank God there's still hope in America. Amen. They reverse. Amen. The abortion thing. I'm here to tell you, but we still got to pray for our nation because the devil is mad. Did you hear me? But I'm here to tell you, God is in control. Did you hear me? Ooh, I said there's still hope for America. People say, why you got to bring religion up in it? Because the Lord says seven things I hate, and one of the things I hate is shedding innocent blood. Did you hear me? You can't get no innocent in a baby in a mother's womb. Amen. In the Old Testament, it said if, if, if a man was rational or they was fighting or a man and hurt a woman with a baby, they were stoned to death. Life is precious. Did you hear me? Life is precious. You probably will not turn into a pillow of salt if you keep looking back. But you can become as dead as a pile of salt on the inside if you allow excess force on the past to steal the life you have today. Did you hear me? If you repented of all your sins and you gave it all to the Lord, amen, quit allowing the enemy to torment your mind and cause you to lose sleep. I tell you, I had the best sleep in my life last night. Of course, Patricia had to have her alarm on her clock, on her cell phone. Oh. And I, I was such in a deep sleep. I got up running through the house. Is Zachary up? Oh, it's five o'clock. We're going to be late for work. <laughs> Patricia, she was in the kitchen, whatever she had in the crock pot. 
She says, today is Sunday. I didn't say a word. I just went back to bed and lay down. But once that thing woke me up, I was awake. Really. Said it at five o'clock. Because she, if we allow things to trouble our minds, we lose sleep. We lose your amen. The enemy think, well, if I'd done it this way, if I'd done it that way, maybe it would have been better. It might, maybe I could have done it this way. Amen. Forget it. You ask for forgiveness. Put it behind you. And go forward in the name of Jesus. Did you hear me? Proverbs 23 and verse 7. For, our, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Where the mind goes, the man follows. Woman also. If I put my mind on the past, I will keep a man repeating if one way or another. But if I put it on the future, I will make progress towards God's dreams for you and me. The enemy's goal is to use yesterday to keep you from living today. Did you hear me? The enemy's goal is to use yesterday to keep you from living today. I believe it's in Isaiah chapter, Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 18 and 19. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall ye know, not know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Isaiah was basically saying, get your mind off of your old sins, your old failures, your old mistakes, your old friends, your old life, your old nature, your old job, everything about your past. Do not let your mind dwell on such formal things. He said, remember ye not the formal things, neither consider the things of old. In Isaiah 43 and verse 9, amen, 19. Notice, God does not say, I will do a new thing. He says, I am doing a new thing. God is doing a new thing, but to experience it, you have to turn your focus away from what God did in the past and unto what he's doing now. Failing to do this will result in a life filled of regrets. Regret means to feel sorry or to grieve over, to mourn a sense of loss, and longing for something or someone gone. The stress over desires unfulfilled or an action performed or not performed. Regret binds you to your past and keeps you focused on formal things. I don't know your life. I'm just giving you a message that God, if you get mad, don't get mad at me, get mad at him. Okay? Amen. Who cooked it? I'm just serving it. Hello? Come on. But God is doing a new thing now. But a person who lets go of past regrets lives in the present and never give up on the fabulous future that God has for us. I know some 
it's probably say when Brother Pruitt, it's easy said than done. No, not really. The reason you won't forget, because you don't want to forget. Ooh wee. Lord, how thank God for my shield of faith. I got it right here. Uh, Lord mercy. I think it's Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 34. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, I will forgive, I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sins forever. Huh? Well, y'all act like he's, he, he never forgives us. And amen. And I will remember their sins no more. Church of the Lord, I great be can. God forgets. We use this excuse. Well, I'm only human. Let's hope you are. Unless you're ailing from Mars or somewhere, you know. Hebrews 10 and 17 says, And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. St. John 8 and 32, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. When you are willing to face the truth about ourselves, we will be set free. The past is paid for. The enemy loves to remind you of your past. He takes the mistakes of disappointments, hurts, and offenses from former seasons in your life and replay them in your mind like a broken record. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. He said, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. And that's Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. No matter what your past may hold, determine in your heart to believe that God has good plans for you. Your mistakes cannot change this truth. The only way it would not be true in your life would be for you to reject it. If you're not willing to believe it, you are not likely to see it come to pass for you. But if you will believe it and stop believe, amen, not stop believing it, you will soon see God's thoughts and plans towards you are for your welfare and peace, not for evil, regardless of your past. He is for you. Did you hear me? He has great plans for you and have every reason to have hope for your future. People say, Brother Pruitt, I, I left the church because you don't have that many programs for this, for the married couples, for the children or for the elderly and all this. And, and I, I, man, I tell you, it's a wonder if I don't get socked in the nose. I said, why did you leave? We need help. You could have handed it up. Hello, you could have handed it up. Why did you leave? We need help in all the areas. Because it takes sacrifice to do the things for the kingdom of God. Did you hear me? I might not got socked in the nose physically, but spiritually I probably did. He is for you. He has great plans for you, and you have amen, every reason to have hope for your future. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? I think it's come on, honey, get a song ready. Philippians chapter 3. 
Listen to the man that said, he was the chiefest of all sinners. In other words, Paul said, if God can save me, he can save you. Did you hear me? Paul was an evil man thinking he was doing good. But God knew Paul's heart as he knows yours. I believe it's Philippians chapter 3. You think Paul could have been what he was with God if he kept remembering when he hauled the men and women, amen, to the arenas to be crucified, to be tore to pieces by dogs and Amen. Stephen was stoned outside and Amen. Saul held his coat. God turned his name to Paul and Amen while they were stoning Stephen outside of the Amen city. You'd think he would have been successful in his ministry. Amen. This is what Paul said in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. Brethren, he's talking to the church. I count not myself to apprehend it, but this one thing I do, forgetting, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward into those things which are before. He said, I press towards the mark for the prize for the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul said, forgetting, forgetting those things are behind. And press forward. You know, you might not have been a little angel all your life. You might have been a little heathen, a little devil. Hello. Some of you are laughing because you know where you came from. And God set you free. Did you hear me? Live for Jesus. If you can live for the devil, you can live for Jesus. Did you hear me? Let's all stand, every head bowed and every eye closed, and no one looking around. God knows your heart, God knows how sincere you are. This morning, are you lost and undone? If you would die today, would heaven be your home? Or would it be hell? Paul said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are. sin in your life you need to repent and give it to the Lord oh church will allow the enemy to hold you from your present and your future a whole lot better come church the altar's open for anybody and everybody come fill these altars stand in the gap for your loved ones call on Jesus you can be the only one that's calling their names out 